good afternoon from another beautiful day here in Yangon, Myanmar. Today, I am going to be showing you guys the downtown and modern, I guess, kind of area of Yangon. I haven't explored this area yet, so you guys are going to be discovering it with me. To the modern area you got to just tell them Sule Pagoda also a very beautiful pagoda not as big as the Shwedagon one but this one is also really beautiful as you can see um, but we are going to just walk around and uh, kind of take in the vibe of this downtown area it is raining um, this is rainy season so it pretty much rains every single day um, but you do have to just kind of find times where it's not raining and then you're able to actually just go out it does come and go so you don't have to like worry that you won't have if you do come during rainy season you don't have to worry that you won't have a chance to go outside but yeah guys some of the buildings and architecture here is just so beautiful honestly it gives me a lot of i guess it gives me similarities of nairobi it's a city that has all the makings of a modern city but a lot of the buildings that are around are very very old and like architecturally like colonial architecture because there was a time when before Myanmar was Myanmar it was Burma and at that time it was under British colonial rule so a lot of the architecture that you'll see has a lot of colonial influence and it's really beautiful guys there are some modern buildings as well and then you'll see like some older buildings too so just very very interesting vibe hello thank you lava and yeah look at this so beautiful man so i guess this is a modern building but they made it look like an older building i'm not sure what this is but wow so this sule pagoda circle is the central point for downtown wow look at that old building there so amazing guys also i get a lot of reminders of ho chi minh city saigon uh, in vietnam you see a lot of the architecture is very similar to that as well because obviously we're it's a bordering country so i guess during the rule a lot of the buildings and architecture and influence was pretty similar between here vietnam and laos so i guess if you go around you'll see a similar vibe you know but i'm about to enter this area i have no idea what this is it looks like some kind of like tower probably like some kind of monument but also a place where people hang out with their family so let's see if we can go inside hey lava Oh, this looks good. Yummy. Some snacks. People selling some snacks along the way. So oh, I've tried this one. Not my favorite snack, but it was pretty good. Alright, so yeah, it's a very nice park kind of place to hang out in the middle of downtown here. Everybody's just chilling. Wow, so beautiful guys. What is this? I have to find out. Let's ask somebody. Maybe they will know. Looks like the Washington Monument. <laughs> like the Myanmar version of the Washington Monument. Such well manicured plants and grass. Look at this, how perfect these bushes are. Perfect circles. Hello, Mingalaba. What is this? What's the name of this? Do you know? You speak English? No. no? Okay, no problem. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. That's a failure number one. Let's see if we can find somebody. I'm sure somebody here can tell me what this is. Mingalaba. 
Hello. What is this? What's the name of this? You don't know? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, guys. So after some Googling, I have discovered that this is actually known as the Independence Monument. So when the uh, people of Myanmar gained independence from the British, I think in 1948, this tower was erected. So over 70 years ago, this tower was erected and it signifies the independence of Myanmar. So this park is uh, Bandula Park, something like that. So you can come here, hang out in the park and just um, see all the beauty that surrounds us, you know, all the beautiful buildings. And then you have this very, very nice looking building here. I mean, so cool. I love this red building here. So I've been exploring most of like older kind of uh, downtown or older Yangon. So now I'm trying to explore like the more, I guess, business district and downtown area, the modern side, you can call it. But as I said, it's a has all the underworks of a modern city, but a lot of the fascia and the buildings are older. So, Ingalava. Wow, this is such a beautiful building, man. It's rare you see architecture like this still intact, but they haven't done much to change some of these buildings, and it's really cool. So as much as I have been told that, you know, you do have to be careful here in Myanmar, which is true, you do. Um, for the most part, so far here in Yangon, uh, we'll see once I travel outside, I haven't felt in danger at any point. Now, you do have to be careful. One thing that is very important if you do come here and you're filming or taking photos, don't ever take photos of police or military because you can get in big trouble for that. And do not talk politics because that is a game that you do not want to get into so um but with that being said like i said i don't feel a sense of like not belonging or uh, that i shouldn't be here so far i have felt absolutely welcomed by the people of myanmar and the burmese people are so kind too they have so much respect like their mannerisms are like they have like when they're walking by you and you're sitting in a lower place they like come down to your level and if, if you're sitting down and you if you're older if you're elder the people shouldn't sit above you that's like a rule or like a cultural norm that i've seen it being implemented i was sitting at a coffee shop and the lady who was working there kept passing me by and every time she would pass me by she would like lower herself and i was wondering why and then i asked somebody and they told me that that's it's like a form of respect so i was like whoa that's amazing so guys another really interesting thing i've noticed by the way that's a church right there uh so on the way here i saw a church a mosque uh as you can see a buddhist stupa and yeah i mean just the religious diversity that's here in this country and pretty prevalent although there's been issues but you do see a lot of religious diversity and that's really cool um all kinds of religions and places for them to worship as well so you guys know i love coffee and what i'm going to do is go to like a more mod modern coffee shop i showed you uh, like a typical traditional tea house like old school myanmar stuff but today we're gonna go and see a a newer like a more modern coffee shop so come join me and y'all know i love coffee I already had one today, but we're going to have another one. Just trying to cross this street. It's a very interesting uh, zebra lines here. So let's cross. I think they're letting us go here. So yeah, I think the coffee shop is pretty close by, according to the GPS. See, as I was telling you, a lot of different religious places. Look, you literally got a stupa and then a mosque right here as well. And I showed you there was a church back there. So literally within a square like half a kilometer there's all of these different places to worship so there is religious diversity here for sure all right guys so i got kind of lost there but i'm on my way to the coffee shop now but i'm just soaking in all of the sights as i go along because this is my first time here as well so I'm looking for a cool little coffee shop that we could stop at, but 
really cool vibe. It actually does remind me a lot of downtown Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi, Vietnam. So you definitely get that kind of similar vibe. All right, so I think I have to go down this street. Wow, look at this. Look at that, man. The buildings just go on forever on this thin street. Alrighty, here we go. I found the cafe. Ming Laba. Alright, here we go. Deja Brew. What a cool name, by the way. Such an awesome name. I really, really love it. De cafe Deja Brew. Alright, here we are. Ming Laba. Oh, thank you. Alright, beautiful. Ming Laba. How are you? Alright. Ming Laba. Here we are guys, Deja Bru. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> I like your name, Deja Bru. It's a cool name. You have iced uh, iced coffee? Yeah. yeah? Okay. Um, like uh, iced, um, not black, but uh, iced Americano. Iced Americano. Small. Um, but can you put some uh, milk in it? Yeah. Milk and a little bit of sugar? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, I will uh, have it take away cup. Yeah, yeah please. And also, you have some dessert too. This one? Dessert? What's it like? Uh, apple pie. Okay. Can I try one apple pie? Yeah. Um, can you make it warm? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And do you take a card or only cash? Uh, only cash. Only cash. cash. Mostly cash. Yeah. Okay. I'm making a vlog oh, about the uh, downtown. I really like the name of the the coffee shop, oh, Deja you? Brew. Yeah. Yeah, it's very. Are you the owner? Yes, I oh, am. Oh, very nice. Okay. How yeah. long has this uh, shop been here? Uh, it's almost four and a half years. Four. And I do have three branches right now. Oh, three branches. Oh, yes. In Yangon. In Yangon. Ah, but this nice. one is our uh, original. This is the original. The third okay. one is just express for takeaway. Ah, okay. So but this one you can actually sit down. Yes. There's Wi-Fi also. Wi-Fi. Okay. More, more like coffee and cake and then we do focus more on coffee on coffee i love coffee so i'm excited to try your coffee <laughs> um okay yeah and one uh apple pie please yeah 11 11 000. yeah okay so uh, there are two blends they just dark roast and uh, light medium roast i prefer a light roast yes yeah. we do recommend this one yeah. because uh, we blend with the Speciality beans from Shan State, like natural sandra. Oh, it comes from uh, Myanmar? Uh, yeah, it's all local beans. Local beans, but okay. But this one we add on specialty beans, which has more like, like fruitful. Fruitful, color. okay. I actually do prefer light roast anyway. Yes. No, I'm not a big fan of the dark roast. Yes. So Plus, the light roast is stronger too, more, more acidic. Light and light, so it could be a bit like balancing. Okay, great, yeah. perfect. I'll take, I'll take that one. Yeah, for the Americano. Yes. Yeah. I, How many shots of espresso do you put so in that? Two shots. Two shots. Two shots. Okay, and perfect. And ice perfect. And Sounds good. Eleven thousand chat, so that's about five dollars uh, if you calculate it, which is not bad for a coffee and uh, a pastry as well. Uh, some it's a little bit more expensive than some countries that I've been to, but cheaper than others. Um, but pretty reasonable for for the most part. So should be coming soon and I will let you guys know. I have a question for you, May. And maybe you can answer it. Um, how how is it like uh, running your own business here in Yangon? Uh, you know the situation, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's a very, very tough moment. It's tough, yeah. okay. So we have been under COVID and then under the COVID. Yeah, so, so but you were able to maintain throughout that time. Yes. Okay. Because uh, mostly we do rely on the local ingredients. That's the one reason, like, I don't need to import. Import, it, so. so that helps. That's okay. how I survive. And second one is, like, even though the aging rate is, like, very, is it fluctuating? Very yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, we can manage it manage because it. of my customers. Because okay, you have like a steady flow of customers, people who are like your normals. No, normal customers. Okay, very yeah. nice. Because uh, uh, four years ago back, I used to have like fifty percent foreigners and fifty percent local. Okay. But uh, once the COVID and COVID, uh, everyone gone. So my customer behavior changed. And it's mostly, mostly locals. Local, uh, like ninety percent. Well, hopefully people will see this video and and then anybody who travels to Yangon will yeah. come visit your cafe. I like I wish people outside of Myanmar know like how 
difficult. We are in a very hardship yeah. moment. Yeah. But we want them to come back and enjoy. definitely. And that's why I'm here to make these videos because I want to show people that, like, though, yeah, there is a tough situation in the country and it might not be uh, the most ideal place, mm -hmm. but. Um, it's still a great place to travel. Like so far in my few days here, I felt so welcomed by the people, and okay. so I felt so good here. So, so uh, we Myanmar people don't want to suppress the negative things. Yeah, it's on the news already. Yeah, but we want to see like how Myanmar people are yeah. warm yeah. and hospitable. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you guys, who else is giving you modern coffee shops in Myanmar? Nobody. You're only gonna get this kind of content on Meyer Travels. Well, yeah. Yeah. And the coffee is great. It's very good. Very well brewed, good beans, and local. And that's what I love about it, is that it's a local uh, local brewery. It's always nice when they use local beans because it's just like you're supporting the farmers and everybody is, everything is locally contrived, so that's good. But yeah, very, very nice coffee, as you can see. This is the light roast. Mm. And then we have the apple pie. And let's try this. Mm, wow, that's really good. I really like the apple pie, it's very good. Oh, thank you very much. Who makes you make it? Yeah, I do. Oh, you make it yourself? Wow. Very good. Very SME. Yeah. Everything. That's good. DIY. Yeah. <laughs> do it yourself. <laughs> Wow, very good. Very nice coffee shop, and the owner is such a nice lady, so you have to come support. <laughs> also, the coffee is really good. The coffee is good. Very good. All right, guys, that was a good time at Deja Brew. Definitely visit that coffee shop if you come here to Yangon and you want to have a good brew, local brew, from a nice person, a nice owner. Now I'm walking through this little side street and I'm going to head over to the biggest mall here in Yangon known as Junction City. Um, I have been told that that is the largest mall here and it's definitely, if you want to see modern Yangon, it's one of the things that you should definitely see. So we're going to go check that out and yeah, I'll show you some sights along the way as well. Assalamu alaikum. What is this? Japati. 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 Yeah. Alu? Alu Tarkari. Ah, Baramaza. Baramaza, you speak Hindi? The Indian, Indian Tarkari. Ah, okay, very nice. Can I, uh, how much for one? 500. 500? Okay. Can I try one, please? One? Yeah, thank you. Alright, guys, we're gonna try some chapati here. And my man over here making. Asalaamu Alaikum. How are you, brother? This is Betal? Bital? Bital. <laughs> this for me? Oh, thank you. One second. Let me get my money. Just gonna get one chapati. For you. She's sitting bad. No problem. No problem. No need. For you. No, thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Huh? Potato. Huh? Yeah, potato. This one is potato? No, 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 no. Oh, you have to try the potato. Ah. Potato soup. Oh, alu, potato. Alu, alu. alu soup. Yes. Yeah, ah, this is alu soup. So this is a potato soup. So you have to dip the chapati into the potato yes. soup. Yes. Ah, okay. Can I just eat it here? Here? Can I eat? No? Okay. Okay, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> All right, guys, just got some chapati and a uh, uh, little potato kind of thing. I'll try it out in a second. I can't really eat it here because there's nowhere to eat it. But So although there are larger streets, between all of these larger streets are very small streets. And in each small street, there's so much going on. One of those places that I stopped in Gachapati was a small street where they just had different foods and things going on and shops and markets. Assalamu alaikum brother. All right. Look at this man. Can't believe I'm in the middle of Yangon city, huh? Who would have thought? 
so we're walking to the mall but i really want to try this i don't know where to stop and try it but man some of these buildings must be so old it's crazy is that the shangri-la is there a shangri-la no 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 it's not the shangri-la all right guys since i've ran out of options of where i can sit and try this chapati i'm just gonna sit here on the stairs in the middle of the city and eat my chapati i don't know how i'm supposed to eat this on the go sure you need a bowl or something but we're gonna make do with this bag and see how it is try it out i don't have a tissue or anything but it should be fun people are looking at me like what the hell is this guy doing they definitely know I'm a foreigner. But man, it's so awesome. Just some cool little street food right in the middle of the city. Some, some soup. Mmm. Amazing. Minalaba. Nekaula. Aba. Wow. The potato is so good. And you know what the cool thing about Myanmar is? The food is not too spicy. So you get a lot of good foods that you might see in other places without the overbearing spices. Like this reminds me of a curry that you might try in India or Pakistan, but not as spicy. For 500, yeah, which is literally like 25 cents. 25 cents for this amazing little meal here. <coughs> you want some brother? What? Yeah? Here. For you. Yeah. Here we go. Okay? Okay. <laughs> wow, this is really cool, guys. I didn't expect to see this here. They have like a skyway that kind of walk. You can walk across the street, so you don't have to cross the street here. You can walk up the skyway and then cross. So, really cool. There's a building that says Rolex at the top. Very random. But yeah, we gotta walk this way. I see some police, so I'm gonna shut the camera off for a second. Wow, they do have a Rolex service center and a store here as well. Now that's fancy stuff, guys. You know, I always wonder who's buying a Rolex in Myanmar, but there's always people with money, you know, so. And mo people with money like expensive watches, so. Tea talk, very interesting. All right, where is this mall? That is the question. We shall find it soon and then I'm gonna go inside and explore what a contemporary mall here in Yangon looks like. Yeah, you know, one thing I have to say is along with seeing some religious diversity in churches and uh, pagodas and, and mosques, you see a lot of cultural diversity in this city too. Like you can see the Indian influence, Bangladesh influence, Vietnamese influence. Um, and obviously the local Myanmar Burmese people um, but yeah you see like it's a very diverse uh, culture or many cultures in one place so that's pretty cool to see as well man look at that very interesting color very bright but yeah so I'm walking through this street and I think this street I have to turn left and then I'm at the mall but this is cool, like we're exploring modern Yangon and through each little enclave you see the old and historical Yangon at the same time. It's a very interesting city, I have to say. One moment you feel like you're in 2023, the next moment you feel like you're in 1950. And I was right, that is the Shangri-La. Anytime there's money around, you'll always find a Shangri-La. I have yet to stay at a Shangri-La. You guys need to watch more of my videos so I can make more money. <laughs> then I'll stay at a Shangri-La. But honestly, to keep it real with you guys, I enjoy the raw and authentic experiences. I don't need the fancy hotels and all of that. It's cool to experience once in a while, but it's not something that I like long to do. Oh, look at this. Even a Hindu, a little Hindu temple as well. Wow, so like I said, I just saw a church over there and now I'm seeing a Hindu temple. So much religious diversity for sure. All right guys, we have arrived to Junction City Tower. 
this is where the mall is as you can see junction city tower so i am going to find my way inside and then i don't know where the mall is by the way this is another market this is an older market it's called uh scott market i think they call it Bogyoke Ongsan market what's the name of this market Bog how do you say Bogya 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 Ongsan market that's the old market right is it still people inside selling things yes. yeah and then this is the new market New market is here. Yeah. This, this is, is a, this, is a tower. this is the tower. Okay. How do I get inside the mall? Yes. This way? It's, a, it's a closed. It's closed? Yes. The mall? But I saw on Google it's open. Every day. 8 Monday. p.m. Every Monday. Closed. Oh, Monday is closed. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So I guess I chose the wrong day to, to come to the mall because on Mondays they are closed which means that we are gonna actually then go explore the old market whatever we we improvise that's what we have to do you know roll with the punches never mind the mall is open guys i think there's another market so this is the mall like your traditional kind of mall but there is a market like with small shops kind of like what i went to in indonesia if you watch my video small small vendors selling different things but this is like the official mall and as you can see, it's pretty big. This is the biggest mall in Yangon. The biggest mall in Myanmar, I guess. I like to show all sides of a country. Not just the old, not just the new, not just the history, but everything. So, hello. We have a KFC here, as you can see. You know what's amazing to me? How KFC manages to... Companies like KFC, Coca-Cola, McDonald's... How do they manage to make it on every single corner and crevice of the world? It just blows my mind. Like, these companies are everywhere. Even in the places that you would never expect them. So, to me, it's just like, they run the world, for real. The Coca-Cola company, man. Every water bottle you buy from every country says the coca-cola company okay here we go i know this brand air k it's like a chinese brand i think just looking for a brand that i know so i can uh see how much things cost here you know oh there's a crispy cream up there look at that might have to go get a donut awesome you definitely have to go get a crispy cream it's been a long time if I've had a good Krispy Kreme donut, so... Alrighty guys, here's a brand that I recognize, Converse. Ningalava, how are you? Good? Uh, how much are these Converse? It's full and 65,000. 400? Full and 65,000. What's lakh again? 400, right? I forget what lakh is. Full and 65,000. Oh, 465,000. I just want to calculate how much that is. Yeah. So 465,000 divided by about 2,200, right? Whoa, that's expensive. <laughs> Very expensive. Yeah, back home in America, I can get it for like maybe $40. Over here, almost $200. Wow, very expensive. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, yeah. What? For Converse's? $200? So that's what I was trying to tell you. In countries like this, man, there's foreign goods or... I'm not even gonna look at anything else. <laughs> that just kind of tells me everything that I need to know as far as uh, these brands are concerned. That's way too expensive, man. Uh, so there's a little supermarket in the mall. It's a very common thing in Asia that you don't see back home too much. Like, there'll be like supermarkets in a mall you rarely ever see that in America. Usually supermarkets are a completely separate thing. But here in Asia, you even actually in like South Asia, Southeast Asia, you see a lot of malls that have um, like inside of it, they'll have a supermarket, which I find very odd, but it's a common trend. Of course, Wall Street English. They're everywhere. I almost got a job with them when I lived in China, but I ended up working for another school, but 
Wall Street English is everywhere. Where is this Krispy Kreme? That is the question. Because I want to get some Krispy Kreme. Or at least see how much it is. To get some idea of what... Oh, there it is. Krispy Kreme. Wow, guys. This mall is huge. So I guess this is like the whole food court area. I see a lot of different kind of places to eat. Food Street. That's the name. Food Street. So, okay. One donut is about a dollar. That's not too bad, actually. So you can get... This is a Milava. So typical, you know, original glazed. Only 1400 That's not bad. 1400 is like maybe about 80 cents for a donut, which is not too bad. Hi. Um, can I just have uh, one glazed original? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, can I pay with a card or it's only cash? Cash. Cash only? Okay. All right. So it's tough to find places that accept card. If it's like a big restaurant or a big mall, a big shop, you can maybe or a hotel, you can pay with the card. But usually in Myanmar, you have to pay with the cash. So it's good to know. So you can use my card for cash. You can use a card also. Uh, oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah, because many places don't accept card, so I was asking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, so I guess they do accept card. Very good. So you will do cash or cash? I will do card. Cash or cash? Yeah. Uh, card. Pay with the card. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right, guys. Gonna get myself a little Krispy Kreme. It's been a long time since I had Krispy Kreme. Is this the real or original Krispy Kreme? Yes. Yeah. Very nice. How long has this been here? Yo, we been around five years. Five years. Yeah. Oh, very nice. So when we came to the we we had an anniversary for the international Krispy Kreme. Ah, very nice. And you give free donuts? <laughs> yeah, <maybe. laughs> okay, I will pay. I can tap. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Actually tastes not like the Krispy Kreme that I'm used to. It's not soft. It's a bit hard. But I don't think it's hot and ready. Krispy Kreme is the best when they come fresh out of the uh, out of the oven. Oh, so good. With some coffee. But not bad. You see Bonchon, that's a Korean chain. You do see a lot of recognizable names. Some that I haven't seen. Lotteria, that's another Korean thing. Wow, that is the most random set of words put together I've ever seen. What does this say? <laughs> to star a big beef stripes, girls in stet suns, cows in buns, and say can you see? And boys in western rock then roll for bigger check fry the room. That is makes absolutely no sense. That is hilarious. And boys in western rock and roll for bigger check fire. The roadside neck bike. <laughs> it's so funny. It's hilarious. I love seeing signs like this in other countries. They should have con they should have consulted someone who speaks English. And they also have a movie cinema here as well in the mall. You can come and watch all the newest movies, and it's a very nice one as well. I'm not a big cinema person because I don't like to sit down and be quiet for too long, as you guys can see. Um, so cinemas are not my thing, but if you like, they do have them. Wow. From up here, you can really see how big the mall is. Oh, I'm just kidding. Imagine I dropped my camera. That would be the end of the GoPro. Guys, I found my favorite, the Nike store. It's my favorite store. I always wear Nike shoes, shorts, shirts. Well, not really shirts, but definitely shoes and shorts. Inglava, how are you? Good. I just want to see how much for the man's shoes, like this one. How much for this one? Three lakh, 35,000. Three lakh? 35,000. 35, so that's 335,000. Okay. So just to give you guys an idea of what 335,000 is in dollars, we are looking at about $152. Whoa, very expensive. Yeah. In America, I can get this shoe for maybe $50. Uh, but I think Myanmar is a little bit more expensive. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, so you guys can see, man. Not, the, not just the Converse, the Nike as well. Very expensive. Woo. Good old mini sole. One of my favorite stores. You can get anything you need, like basic kind of 
home household goods, hygienic goods. Oh, and they have an Indian restaurant as well. Very nice. All right. So yeah, guys, this is uh, the modern side of Myanmar that maybe you don't see on TV or on YouTube. I don't think people really show this side of Myanmar too much. But there is a modern side. There is a up and coming middle class, I think, here. And there are people with money who do come to these establishments. I don't think this place is the reality for most people in this country, but I just like to show what's available and kind of give you guys an idea of what the different dichotomy in a country is. I've shown you all sides, so you guys can make your decision then. But with that being said, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. This has been the modern side of Yangon. The Yangon you don't see on TV. Remember, continue to learn, continue to grow. And there is no growth until you leave your comfort zone. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.